Hi, it's the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, May 26th, 2025, my first video of the year. Hard to believe that we're on the cusp of another Atlantic hurricane season set to officially begin in six days on the 1st of June. And 2025, to be frank, is a pretty weird and sobering time to be a meteorologist, but Mother Nature does not stop and the show must go on. So we're going to talk about what we're going into here at the beginning of the hurricane season. Sometimes it starts quickly in the Atlantic, sometimes it starts real slow. Right now, not seeing a lot out here, but there is a tropical storm about to develop in the eastern Pacific, the first one of their season, which started a couple of weeks earlier than the Atlantic on May 15th. So let's get into it and talk about the forecast for the upcoming season. And the foundation of any such forecast is the ocean. The reason we can forecast the upcoming hurricane season at all, and we're not really precise at it, but the reason we can even get close half the time is because of the global oceans. They are much more slowly changing than the atmosphere, and the atmosphere reacts to the underlying ocean conditions in a pretty fundamental way. So by looking at how the ocean is arranged now and in the opening months of the summer, really sets the tone for how things will proceed into the August, September, and October timeframe, which is the three-month period when the Atlantic is at its highest rate of hurricane activity. So right now, this is the current conditions for the current week, an image courtesy of NOAA showing the sea surface temperature SST anomaly. So here, warm colors indicates warmer than normal water. Blue colors indicates colder than normal water. And what you'll notice is that the Atlantic has a little bit of yellow in it, especially in the deep tropical Atlantic. This is where it really matters. And having warmer than normal water here is always a sign that there could be higher activity, but it's a little lessened than last year. And if we look in the central equatorial Pacific, we also see a more muted signal relative to last year. Last year, we had a, a La Nina going into the fall and winter. We're now coming out of that La Nina and we're in what's called Enzo neutral conditions, which means this doesn't really qualify as a La Nina or an El Nino, but you still do see a little bit of cooler water here. So the remnant ghost of that La Nina remains and there's some cool water between Hawaii and Mexico as well as the Pacific Meridional mode remains negative. Now, if we look at a correlation map showing us where this really matters, this shows you how Atlantic hurricane activity correlates to the water temperature in any given place. So orange colors here mean that warmer than normal water in that spot correlates with a more active hurricane season. And blue means that colder water correlates with a more active hurricane season. So you can see something you might expect. The strongest signal on the globe is in the tropical Atlantic itself, or the main development region, or MDR for short. If water is warmer there, that's about the strongest signal that you can get for a more active hurricane season. And the inverse is also true. If the water is colder here, that's a big signal for an inactive season. But you also see the Pacific in general has this warm water in the west, slightly cooler water in the east pattern. And that's generally telling you the, that a La Nina favors the Atlantic more than El Nino. In fact, El Nino is one of the most suppressive features that can drag down an Atlantic hurricane season and keep it quiet. Uh, you do see that this year, right now, we do have a little bit of both of those things, some warmer water in the Atlantic, and we have warm water in the West Pacific, cooler in the East. So in general, the current pattern leans toward active rather than quiet. And this general setup is expected to persist. This is the forecast from an average of several seasonal models called the NMME or North American Multi-Model Ensemble System. And this shows continuing, you know, orange and yellow colors in general in the tropical Atlantic and then blue colors out in the central and eastern Pacific, maybe even the return of a weak or moderate La Nina. There's a little bit of disagreement about that. Some models still show the reemergence of La Nina. Some show neutral conditions prevailing and a couple even show an El Nino reversal happening during the summer. But right now the official outlook from NOAA shows a 54% chance of Enzo neutral conditions and a 33% chance of La Nina conditions with only 12 or 13% for El Nino. And so that combined chance of about 85 to 87% of either La Nina or neutral would in general favor a more Atlantic hurricane season if the Atlantic itself is warm. And you can see that it is forecasted to be warm, but it's not quite as stark as it was last year. You might recall that 2024 was a hyperactive hurricane season. We had 18 storms well above average and several major hurricane landfalls 
on the United States coastline. If we look at what the forecast was for the summer last year, you'll see how much more orange this was and how much more blue the La Nina was out here. So we had a much stronger dichotomy between these two regions, which is very important. And in reality, you know, this verified pretty well. This was the observed sea surface temperature anomaly during July to September 2024. And we indeed had a very warm tropical Atlantic. And we did have a moderate La Nina, not quite as strong as forecasted, but still a huge contrast with the MDR in the Atlantic. And this really fueled a very active season. This year, we don't see quite that kind of a stark signal, but we do still have cooler here, warmer over the tropical Atlantic. That difference there is very important, and it probably still leans toward an active hurricane season rather than not. We can take a look at how this relationship has typically panned out in history. This is a data plot showing from left to right how warm the Atlantic is. So to the right of this middle line, the Atlantic is warmer than normal. To the left, it's colder than normal. And then on the y-axis, this is El Nino versus La Nina. So to uh, above this line, you basically have El Nino. And below this line, you have La Nina. So each quadrant of this plot kind of gives you a different regime of how these two are playing together. So in this upper left quadrant, you essentially have an El Nino. So the Pacific is warm, but the Atlantic is cold. So you have warm Pacific, cold Atlantic. In the upper right, you have a warm Atlantic and a El Nino. So you have warm and warm for both. In the lower left, you have a colder Pacific and colder Atlantic. So you have cold and cold. And in the lower right, you have a La Nina, so you have a cold Pacific, but you have a warm Atlantic, so you have cold and warm there. This bottom right quadrant is typically the zone where the Atlantic is typically more active. And if you look, the historical years since the 1980s, these colored dots are colored by overall activity level, or ACE, accumulated cyclone energy. So red dots here indicate active seasons blue dots indicate less active seasons and you'll notice that in years where we have a la nina and the atlantic tropics are warm you have mostly red dots here there's a couple of exceptions a couple of years where that didn't happen but by and large active seasons are favored and you can see that in the upper left quadrant when we have an el nino and a cold atlantic the opposite is true you have mostly blue dots here because that's the exact opposite of the active quadrant and that's when we typically have less active hurricane seasons again there is one exception here but on average you have mostly blue dots there so where does this year stack up well again we're looking at the forecast from the model and it thinks we're going to have a slight la nina and a slightly warmer atlantic how that looks on this plot is a dot right about here so it's not the most extreme warmth that we've ever seen in the atlantic we have had warmer years like these further to the right on this plot and it's not the deepest la nina we've ever had we've had plenty of dots colder than that. So we're right kind of in the middle of the pack here, but leaning towards this bottom right quadrant where typically active hurricane seasons occur for the Atlantic. So this would naturally tell you that the odds favor a near normal to above normal hurricane season rather than a quiet one. And this is indeed what we're getting from the official NOAA Atlantic hurricane season outlook where they have 60% chance for an above normal season, 30% for near normal, and only 10% chance for below normal. So again, this is probabilistic. This is not an exact science. You'll see that the range of possible counts of how many storms we're going to have, they're pretty wide ranges. And that reflects the fact that we can't be too precise because it's really difficult to be precise. There is too much uncertainty in a forecast like this. But in general, the odds are leaning towards an active season rather than a quiet one. So we've had a few of those in the last five years, a few active seasons here in a row. So it's good to have a plan. The biggest thing you can do in advance of the season is know what your situation is, what your vulnerability is in your locale, and what your overall plan might be if a storm were to happen to come your way. How would you evacuate if you need to? Do you have a safety kit? Do you have supplies in your home? I'm in Hawaii myself and I have to prepare just in case. Uh, hurricanes are fairly rare here, knock on wood, but I always have to be ready. And that's, a, that's the number one thing anyone can do to stay safe in the upcoming year. Here's one more look at the current satellite imagery of the tropical Atlantic. Again, the Eastern Pacific is getting started here with its first storm likely to form within the next few days. But over in the Atlantic, pretty quiet right now. I'll let you know when that changes. Keep an eye on my social media, at Tropical Tidbits on most platforms. 
and I'll be making more videos as the opening act of the 2025 Atlantic Hurricane season approaches. Let's stay safe this year, everyone. Take care. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.